Good day everyone! Today we will be presenting our work about Apo Makliing Dulag. We are Group 1. Our work entitled, Life and Legacy of Apo Makliing Dulag. Here are the table of contents. Chapter 1. Early Life and Family There are no records documenting Makliing Dulag's state of birth, but he was born in the highland village of Bugnay, Tinglayan, Kalinga, Abayao. And the accounts of his contemporaries in Bugnay indicate that he was in his early 20s during World War II when he served as a porter to guerrilla forces fighting against the Japanese force. As was usual among the Butbut people at that time, he did not receive any formal schooling although he learned how to sign his name. Almost 500 kilometers north of the Philippine capital, Manila, lies the landlocked province of Kalinga in the Cordillera region. It is home to various indigenous groups like the Butbut tribe. In the old days, the tribesmen used headhunting as a means to protect their village from foreign invasion. Kalinga is also known for indigenous tattooing. Chapter 2 Early Leadership Role Makling Dulag was a respected elder of the Butbut tribe in the mountain village of Bungay in the Cordilleras. He was considered wise and brave by those in the community, and he served three terms as barrio captain of Bungay. In 1974, the Marcos regime planned on installing a massive dam along the Chico River, like the majority of Kalinga people of the time. Makling earned his living through farming although at one point briefly took on the job as a caminero, road maintenance worker, for the Department of Public Works and Highways. By the 1960s, he had become a respected pangkat leader among the Butbut people who lived in the villages of Pungay, Buscalan, Lokong, Nibat, and Butbut in the municipality of Tinglayan, Kalinga. He was elected to three terms as barrio captain of Bungay. One contemporary noted, he did not hesitate to lose a day's work to settle disputes among his people. The people found their voice in Makli and Dulag, though he was not formally educated. Dulag found the right words to defend his people. To this day, Dulag is known for his words against the dam project. Dulag and other Caldillera leaders solidified opposition against the dam through a series of tribal pacts, recognizing the critical role that he played Government soldiers murdered Dulag in his own house, surrounding it in the night and showering it with bullets. Chapter 3 Opposition to Chico River Dam Project The Chico River Dam Project was a proposed hydroelectric power generation project involving the Chico River on the island of Luzon in Philippines that locals notably the Kalinga people resisted because of its threat to their residences their livelihood, and their culture. The project was shelved in the 1980s after the public outrage in the wake of the murder of opposition leader Makli Ing Dulag. It is now considered a landmark case study concerning the ancestral domain issues in the Philippines. A situation report by Joanna Carreño, Jessica Carreño, and Jeffrey Nettleton for the 1979 National Convention of the Ugnayan Pang Agham Tao, UGAT, Incorporated states that opposition for the Chico River Basin Development Project started as early as 1965, upon the initiation of the survey work in affected areas. Locals were wary of these destructive implications of the project, having heard of or witnessed the devastating effects of the Binga and Ampoklao dams to the minorities of Benguet. Earlier studies on the project, however, were not deemed feasible because of high estimated construction costs. Activities under the project picked up its pace in the 1974, at the time when the countries around the globe were reeling from the effects of the OPEC, oil price hike of 1973. Alternative sources of energy became highly desirable as the price of oil quadrupled. This led the government of President Ferdinand Marcos to tap the German firm La Meyer International in the cooperation of the Engineering and Development Corporation of the Philippines to develop a technical feasibility study. The Marcos administration then sought funds from the World Bank in order to fund the project. 
Dulag's name is etched on the Wall of Remembrance at the Bantayog ng Mga Bayani, Monument of the Heroes, in Quezon City, Metro Manila, which is devoted to the victims of extrajudicial murder since the martial law era. The date of Dulag's murder, April 24, is one of two Cordillera days honored yearly in the Cordillera administrative region. To demonstrate murder on April 24, 1980, Marcos controlled military soldiers assassinated Mac Macli Dulag. According to eyewitness sources, 10 military personnel arrived in Book 9 on two Ford Fiera vehicles looking for Maclean Dulag and Pedro Dung Dungok Sr., a local opposition leader. Military officers urged Maclean to come out, but he refused and told him to come back the next day. He asked his wife to keep the door shut while he locked the latch and lit the lamp. The assailants used the light of the lamp to determine where their target was hiding behind the door, and they shot Macling through a slit under the door, killing him instantly. The ones on the left breast and right pelvis are the ones that are lethal. At least 13 bullet holes were dis eventually discovered on Macling Dulag's doors and wall, and as well as shell casings from a Browning automatic rifle and an M16 rifle. Hearing this commotion, Dungok Sr. quickly arranged his pillows and blanket to make it appear as if someone's, someone was sleeping inside and hid alongside it. His wife answered the door as guys in uniform began shouting in their direction, demanding that they open it. She pointed to the soldiers who opened fire on the rolled up blanket where his husband was sleeping. Dungok Sr. was able to get away with only a minor wrist injury. Our members are Daniel Nicole Tiu, Dane Gabriel Venus, Zarong Kal, and Rick Ong. Here are our sources. Thank you for listening. Credits. This presentation template was created by SlidesGo, including icons by Flaticon, and infographics and images by Freepik.